Welcome to the Industry 4.0 Podcast with Grant Tech. Hi, and welcome to today's episode of the Industry 4.0 Podcast with Grant Tech. This podcast delivers a look into the world of manufacturing with a focus on stories and trends that lead to better solutions. Our guests share tips and outcomes that will help improve your productivity. I'm your host, Sam Russum, and today I am joined by Jacob Chapman of Nozomi Networks. Jacob, thank you so much for joining today. Yep, uh, it's my pleasure to be here. Great. Um, so, hey, tell me a little bit more about your yourself and uh, what you're doing over at Nozomi. Awesome. Um, so uh, I guess I'll start. Uh, so I'm a Grand Tech alum, actually. Uh, what feels like a lifetime ago, I used to work for Mr. Sam Russell over <laughs> That's here. That's right. <laughs> and now I'm on this podcast, which I like to lovingly call Sam's Club Live, if that's not officially <laughs> the name of your podcast. I think it's, I, I would petition that that should be the name. But uh, anyway, so so about me, um, I uh, I, again, I, I started my career at Grand Tech. I moved through a variety of roles, uh, engineer, project manager, account manager, um, and then eventually led uh, Grand Tech's industrial IT and cybersecurity practice. And it was at that time that I made uh, sort of a career shift from uh, designing and implementing uh, automation control systems and the industrial networks behind them to a focus on cybersecurity, which I just found as a very interesting uh, topic. Uh, a space to be involved in. Um, it really just captured my heart, I guess. Um, at that time, I, I decided to uh, uh, make a, a further career change and uh, join Nozomi Networks as a solutions architect. So, and that's the, the position I currently hold and is my day job. I work within our alliances team. So I'm working a day in and out with our partners uh, almost exclusively. Uh, I do get pulled into and customer engagements really from the perspective of supporting our partners. Um, and I really get to see a great, uh, I guess, purview of the, the landscape. So I work with uh, the large the global GSIs like Accenture, uh, major MSSP providers like IBM Security, um, other technology providers that wanna maybe do an integration with uh, Nozomi Network software. So uh, Fortinet Fortigate firewalls, for example, Palo Alto and so on. Um, uh, and yeah, so, so that's, uh, kind of what I do with my, uh, uh, in my role today. Cool. That's great. Yeah. It's, uh, it does really feel like forever ago that, uh, you know, <laughs> a, a fresh faced Jacob Chapman walked into the yeah. Grand Tech office and realized he was reporting to me and didn't walk out immediately. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, but it's been a lot of fun to, to stay in touch with you kind of over at Nozomi and yeah. see that, that you really embrace that cybersecurity piece. Uh, it's been really awesome. So, uh, yeah, yeah. I'm happy to, to bring you back into to things like this. Yeah, this is fun. Cool. Um, so let's really get started. Um, so the main question that we kind of like to ask everybody to get things uh, kicked off is what does Industry 4.0 mean to you? Yeah. Um, so there's, uh, I would say, obviously, a lot of different perspectives out there. But uh, my favorite uh, definition um, uh, looks at Industry 4.0 in the context of and contrasting it to the previous uh, industrial revolution. So, you know, the first one being the introduction of steam power to manufacturing, the second one being the introduction of electricity to manufacturing, and the third being the introduction of computers and embedded controllers to manufacturing. And I think um, the main difference with Industry 4.0 to Industry um, 102030 is connectivity. So basically connect connections and connectivity is really what Industry 4.0 is all about. And then the, the benefits and capabilities and the challenges that, that come along with just ubiquitous connectivity. Yeah, absolutely. That was a theme that came up a lot kind of as I was introducing the kind of the con the concept of Industry 4.0 kind of in my, my introduction episode is it's really about that kind of evolution and the connectivity piece of it. Um, now, you're in a little bit of a unique situation, I think, compared to some of the other guests that we've had and that really a lot of people are kind of coming in from the, the manufacturing and the controls technology space. You're really kind of coming at this in a different way from more of the networking, yeah. connectivity and security space. So how does your, your platform, Nozomi's take, kind of what you all do every day impact digitalization and Industry 4.0 initiatives in general? Yeah, yeah. I mean, and I, I would, I, I do agree with uh, kind of what you said that we're, uh, and I'm approaching industry 4.0 in a different way in terms of network security and and so on. Uh, that said, it's it's really 
um, uh, an interesting mix and blend between um, industrial control system, I guess, traditional um, uh, thought processes and, and knowledge and also IT security. So, and even if you look at uh, um, the staff makeup of uh, OT security vendors, generally it's a 50-50 mix of IT security backgrounds who are coming into the company and being like, I don't know what a PLC is or an HMI is, and it's very, very foreign um, to, to those that haven't been in the OT space. Uh, and then for me, coming from the other direction, kind of IT security and all these uh, practices and tools that are out there is very foreign. So it is a very interesting mix, um, but the OT side is not uh, forgotten. It's, it's, it's very much uh, embedded into what we're doing. But um, I, I would say how we impact digitalization. So uh, really uh, in uh, bouncing off of the, the previous question, what is Industry 4.0? And it's about connectivity. Um, with greater connectivity comes greater cybersecurity risk. It's just unavoidable. If you're connecting things together, you're gradually and uh, actually very quickly increasing the risk of a cyber security incident uh, of all types. Um, so really how we're impacting um, uh, digitalization is providing a means to manage and mitigate that risk as you improve your um, uh, increase your connectivity and that's that's the I guess short and sweet and um, <laughs> that's really the answer it's that simple cool um and then also again since you're coming at it from more of that different slightly different approach of cybersecurity again not totally different as you just mentioned <laughs> um knowing that we were probably maybe even getting into to pitch territory here but but tell me kind of more about like nozomi and what you all do and what differentiates your approach to cybersecurity yeah. from from what other people are doing and and where those advantages are yeah so uh, and i'll give a little bit of a background on nozomi so nozomi uh, um for, for those that are uh, starting to look at OT security, uh, might be hearing about Nozomi for the first time in the past year or two, but Nozomi's actually been around since 2013, so almost 10 years. Um, it was founded by two individuals. They, they had uh, essentially studied for their PhD in, uh, in Italy. They each graduated, they went into industry. Uh, one of them had studied uh, Cybersecurity for industrial control systems, and this thesis was actually on monitoring process variables for, as indicators of attack. So your Modbus process variables, your DMP uh, process variables, when they're changing, how could that indicate that something is funky going on? Um, while he was working in industry, essentially he noticed uh, at, at the company he was working at that they didn't have good visibility into their OT systems. He pitched internally, let's build this software. I think we can do it. That, uh, that request was declined, so he decided to call up his buddy from school, say, let's make this software on, his, on our own. They did that, and then they went from company to company saying, hey, can we, you know, can we, um, uh, uh, can we provide this to you? Uh, we think it's going to be very valuable. They eventually landed their first sale, um, and it really was the, the massive acceleration of incidents across the globe that really started to pick, uh, you know, put wins in the sale of, uh, of Nozomi networks, um, really transitioning from uh, the uh, operational model of trying to approach customers and explain to the value to now when I'm doing a demo for a new partner, I don't have to explain that OT security risk is a thing. That's that mind shift. Uh, that mindset has already shifted due to the other factors. Um, so really what we, uh, what Nozomi Networks provides today, it would be classified in the uh, cybersecurity tool space as a network intrusion detection system um, uh, in uh, contrast to like a SIM, which provides logging or endpoint protection. It's a network intrusion detection system is the name of the category. Um, so uh, how it works is it, it passively listens to traffic in the industrial network. So as your controller is talking to an HMI or talking to a, um, a historian or to any system, all those DNP, Modbus communications, there's a big long list of protocols that are supported. We listen to a copy of that traffic. Uh, as, as many listeners of this podcast may know, um, OT traffic is very rarely or never encrypted. So uh, we don't need decryptors to really inspect all the variable names that, that are being communicated, who's talking to who, it's just kind of open for, for the world to listen to. And then we map out the, the map of who's talking to who, how is the device behaving? Is this an HMI? Is it a server? 
Um, also, even uh, fingerprinting more IoT devices like VoIP phones, VoIP servers, um, CCTV cameras. Um, then you get this big map of you know who's talking to who. We get uh, behavioral models for what does a process variable, how does it typically behave? It's usually within this range. It's updating every 100 milliseconds or whatever. And then once our software is put into protecting mode, we alert on two different types of alerts. Uh, one is a signature-based alert, so we see a match to a known malicious signature. That could be maybe a known bad IP address that's been compromised that's affiliated with a threat actor. So if ransomware tries to call home to this IP server on the internet, that's, that's a signature. And then also the other category is anomaly-based detection where something is just behaving in a way that it didn't use to before. So a process variable suddenly going three times the range that it ever did in its, in its past or stop not updating at all or updating three times as frequently. Um, and that ends up giving tons of context to uh, both uh, operational stakeholders who may want to be just checking to make sure that their PLC is running or a new device is connecting, but also the security side of the house and seeing, hey, there's, there's uh, you know, a, a new malicious uh, alert that's been triggered. So that's kind of what we do and, and how we do it. We'll, we'll distribute our sensors throughout an environment. There's uh, uh, other components of, uh, I guess, the software that will aggregate data into single consoles. Um, going more into your differentiation part of the question, um, one of the th uh, parts of our solution that stands out is called Vantage. So Vantage is, uh, it was, it's our uh, newest product to release. Uh, it was released in October of 2020, if I'm getting my date right. So what is that, uh, two, almost two years old? Okay. Um, it, it, like I said, it's a cloud-based SaaS platform. It's used to aggregate data from uh, sensors distributed across the country or across the world. So. Uh, if we take like a renewable energy customer and they have facilities across the country, all of that data would aggregate up into the cloud portal. Um, it also provides uh, more operational benefits. So automatically pushing down uh, uh, subscription feed updates to update the uh, malicious signatures in the databases, um, providing automatic licensing updates, operating system updates, all that sort of stuff. It almost becomes like the brains of the operation controlling all of your sensors. And that's unique to the marketplace, specifically in OT. We're really the only company out there that has an OT specific um, cloud SaaS uh, security monitoring solution. There, there are uh, similar approaches out there, um, mm -hmm. maybe some solutions that you can take their on-premise thing and put it into your own private cloud and run it that way. But uh, in terms of a true SaaS and with the feature set that it has, that's that's a standout differentiator for sure. That's cool. So so let me see how much of that I got right to like super over generalized, <laughs> right? So, so step one, like kind of one of the things that you all do differently, right? If we're thinking about cybersecurity, it's like that a lot of people have like a, a guard fence and like a guard shack and somebody watching the perimeter you guys are also more focused on like what's actually happening inside of the fence. And is any of the yeah. activity in there indicating that someone has broken through and there is a bad yeah. actor in there. And not yeah. only that, but you also have this vantage thing where if you have multiple sites in multiple areas, you can kind of aggregate a lot of that data and supervise it all from one place, yeah. even if you have multiple fences that you're watching. Exactly. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. The, and the, 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 the perimeter fence, I, you're kind of thinking of like a firewall, let's say, yeah. right. That's, that's sort of your perimeter. That is a, uh, the, uh, in, in, uh, in years past, a perimeter based approach to security was kind of acceptable. Um, that's the, the, the mindset has certainly shifted where a perimeter based approach to security is, is really not enough. And the mm -hmm. term for it is zero trust, um, security. So, um, that, that really means that you have to always assume that your, your perimeter can be breached. Uh, any device that's communicating to another device needs to authenticate and prove itself. Um, that zero trust approach is, 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 is really just t taking over how um, everybody approaches security. And for sure, our sensors are running inside the perimeter or ingesting the traffic from inside the OT network, all the communications. So from that perspective, what you said, uh, yeah, is correct. Cool. All right. I'll take that. Um, so, so tell me, uh, give, give us an example. Like what's a really cool application where, where you've seen this done in practice? Uh, so a very cool one, um, and this is fun. So uh, the, I, and I, I don't know the ins and outs of it, but I'm, I, I know from a, the, this is public knowledge. You can read on it online. So when one country 
purchases military equipment from another country, at least this is my understanding, is that the company, the country that's purchasing, making this huge purchase can say, if I'm going to purchase this stuff from you, Mr. USA, I'd like you to do something in return. I'd like you to do business with a, a company in my country. So that happened. So uh, Nozomi Networks is actually uh, based in Switzerland. That's where we were founded. Again, the, the, the founders studied in Italy. Uh, Switzerland is right across the border. Um, so the Swiss wanted to buy F-35 fighter planes from the U.S. And they said, we're going to buy a bunch, but in return, we'd like you to do some business with a Swiss company. So the U.S. said, we'll do some business with Nozomi Networks. So we're in the process of setting up uh, a center of excellence, basically <clears throat> monitoring the traffic between the command center that's communicating up to the F-35 jets in the air. And we're monitoring the communications back and forth between the commands that are up to the, the, the jets. Um, again, I'm, I'm saying super high level because I'm not super, uh, I'm not um, uh, in the weeds on that activity, but it is really cool to think about our software monitoring fighter jet communications. Well, and it's also an interesting idea, right, of like expanding beyond just the industrial space, right? You know, and, yeah. and it, but it still translates really well. I'm sure they have their yeah. IT networks over there. That is their yeah. operations network, really monitoring yeah. and kind of controlling yeah. for that. So a lot of the principles yeah. apply. That is really neat. Not yeah. what I expected. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Probably not what you expected. The, the applicability of what we do is also very, very broad because it, it comes, uh, I mean, there is a like, so when you're looking at our software, uh, what what do you support? What de devices do you support? Their answer is really less what devices do we support. It's more what protocols do we support? Okay. So any equipment that's utilizing the long list of protocols that we can inspect are equally um, applicable uh, or our software is equally applicable. So again, uh, whatever protocols are being used between the, the command center up to the jets, as long as we support those protocols, then yes, we'd be able to monitor the traffic. Well, and I'm assuming you find a protocol you don't support the goal. That question then becomes, okay, well, how do we support it too, right? Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, I, do, I could go into how we do that uh, as well, but uh, unless you want me to, I'll let you. <laughs> we, we try I'll... to keep these to a, a 20, 30 minute time. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. So, so next time we go grab a drink or something, we'll do it there. <laughs> sure, sure. Cool. Um, so let's let's shift it back to industry a little bit, right? So um, tell me kind of in your experience, talk with the Industry 4.0, um, you know, with customers, at that like plant manager level, what seems to engage them the most? What are they most interested in and excited about in industry 4.0? Yeah, um, so, are you, so are you saying about uh, in security in general or just in industry 4.0 in general? What I think is the most exciting thing? Um, like what plant managers think is the most exciting thing, right? As you're talking to them about that and okay. cyber security, yeah. like, right, what do they latch on to? Yeah. So, I mean, I would say security is not what they find the most exciting. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, like the CISO IT security will get really excited when they see what the software can do, but a plant manager is, is, is not. Um, I would actually probably say a plant manager is most excited more about what you're focused in, uh, more around uh, smart data and analytics, being able to get insights on plant operations. Um, I see potentially a world where you can pull up your phone and ask Siri, uh, what is the productivity of my line today? And it just like dynamically calculates that, or, you know, you can just ask a question, any question about your operations to get answers minus the part where Siri only understands 50% of what you say. So hopefully that part can get fixed in, a, in an OT. Um, but I, I think that would be uh, the most exciting. And, and there is a security side of that too. If, if uh, that, that sort of, um, availability of data can be applied to an analytics platform, and then you could ask it where, what, it, what is my biggest risk today, or where, where are the largest amount of vulnerabilities across my enterprise? That sort of like insights, immediate insights uh, being brought to the top with zero effort from the person going into it would be the most exciting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, I, I think that's a good kind of perspective too, like that that Siri one and kind of it, the your information systems automatically kind of being able to provide necessary information to you. You, you see the foundations of that already and stuff like just like yeah. your Power BI tools and things where it, like it, there's a little, it, it's not clippy, but it's essentially clippy, yeah. right? Coming up and saying like, hey, just ask me a question. Clippy. I think I can figure it out, right? That's them working <laughs> towards 
um th this kind of more intelligent system so uh yeah i get exactly. it exactly um how about more like kind of on the the manufacturing like executive side so if you're going outside of just the um yeah you know, the person who's responsible for their plants and more for the person who's responsible for a larger corporation where manufacturing yeah. is just one part of what they do what what is it that kind of excites them yeah um uh so i i i think of uh the pandemic that we've all been going through and how many risks it must be bringing up to the boardroom and executives um or the geopolitical climate uh that we have going on right now how our company is going to respond i'm I, I go on reddit all the time there's a lot of hating on some companies that are still doing business in in certain countries and uh, you know all these sort of like consumer opinion pushbacks on them. Anyway, going back to, there's a little bit of a, dig a digression, but going back to your question, I think uh, risk management in general is continuing to uh, show to the board that, that needs to be uh, more broadly uh, monitored and managed. Um, uh, security risk being one of them, logistical risk, supply chain risk being another one of them. Um, even like uh, internal culture risks. So there's companies like Uber uh, out there who have had very public scandals about their internal culture, uh, hyper masculinity type things. All of this, I think there is a growing uh, recognition for the, the need to uh, manage and monitor risk on a broader scale more adeptly. And I think tools that can be introduced that make that simpler are gonna be exciting as that recognition of uh, risk management importance grows. Sure. Well, and I can even tie that back to your last answer too, kind of around that excitement around data and analytics and that they're not yeah. really excited about cybersecurity, but it is yeah. a necessary <laughs> risk mitigation tool as yeah. people are starting to, to dive yeah. into that more, right? It's, it's a, yeah, you have to be able to cross that bridge if you really want to be able to play reasonably in that area. So. It, exactly. If, if, if there is an executive that, that doesn't understand cybersecurity, doesn't uh, maybe even understand industrial systems and what's going on in the manufacturing space, but there could be something out there that just lets them know your risk is in comparison to your peers. And maybe it's like a benchmarking thing in comparison to your peers, you're performing in the top 10%, the top 20% or something like that. And it could be that clear for them. Uh, I, I think that would be exciting. Yeah, for sure. Um, okay, so a couple of final questions. One, you know, so we always ask um, uh, earlier guests kind of questions that they want to pay forward to the next guest and kind of hear other uh, experts yeah. weigh in on. Um, one of the questions we got recently was around how to best involve quality departments and, and other stakeholders in larger industry 4.0 or pharma 4.0 initiatives. Do you have any okay. experience that you want to speak to around that? Um, so I, I, I would say pharma is not my specific area of uh, experience. I mean, I, I did work with pharmaceutical customers quite a bit while I was at Grand Tech, uh, but more like applying my cybersecurity and IT side of things, uh, going to quality groups uh, specifically, I, I would say, I'm not sure. I would answer it uh, maybe in the context of uh, when Nozomi Networks is selling into a customer or even a, a partner. Um, for that matter, we do need to engage uh, quite a few different stakeholders. Uh, generally speaking, the OT side of the house, the tool is going to be going in their environment. They need to be comfortable with it. Um, but also when we're speaking to engineering resources, how does it provide value to them? And then on the IT uh, side, it's a little bit more uh, obvious and clear. Um, so maybe answering the question in a how, how would I engage different stakeholders in general? Uh, for sure, uh, involving them early on in the process is is key. If if you're all almost at the deployment or purchasing phase, and then they're only getting uh, involved at that stage, then there's going to be some some breaks being pumped and saying, "Wait, we need to look at this. We haven't seen how the risk is going to be from our side." So engaging them early is just going to make the process smoother. And then also, I I think for our, for technology and service providers in general. Um, with the convergence of IT and OT and, and uh, things and, and quality and so on, um, there's an increasing burden to be able to articulate the value to various groups. So you need to have that value pretty succinctly um, uh, uh, put together in advance of your pitches so that when you you can recognize who's in the room and then make sure you're speaking to the value to them so everybody comes out of meetings excited and understanding of, of uh, kind of what you're talking with them about. 
Yeah, so so you're pretty much saying as another frequently ignored stakeholder being the cybersecurity <laughs> stakeholder. <laughs> please please just call us. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Cool. And then, uh, yeah, what what do you want to have our next guest answer? What's a question that you have around Industry 4.0 that you want to hear uh, answered on the podcast? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so uh, despite the fact that uh, Nozomi has been uh, in business for almost 10 years now, we are still very much uh, classified as a, a startup. Um, and it was my working at Nozomi has been my first foray into the startup world, which is also, we haven't even talked about that a whole, a whole other <laughs> can of worms and not can of worms, but in terms of, uh, things that I, I think about it. Yeah. No, next time we have forever. you on. Yeah. Next time. <laughs> yeah. We're going to need to do Grand Tech Live 2.0 or something. But, um, <laughs> so I, I would want to know in, uh, because we were talking about analytics being a super exciting space for plant managers and beyond, I would want to know what are the fast fastest growing uh, and innovative startups right now in the data analytics space for OT. So who are their startups? How fast are they growing and what's what's causing their success? Cool. Yeah, that, that sounds great. And it's certainly uh, something that we're researching a lot at Grant Tech as we're trying to find uh, yep. the right answers to that for, for our customers too. So yep. uh, great. Well, hey, that was awesome. Thanks a lot for uh, being able to join me on the podcast today. Uh, I hope everybody who was listening really enjoyed it. Uh, Jacob, great insight as always, um, and really uh, appreciated hearing things from that cybersecurity perspective. Definitely a little bit of a different take than we've been getting uh, from some of our other guests. So uh, really appreciate it. Thank you. Awesome. Yeah, it was my pleasure. Great. So, uh, and thanks to everybody uh, out there for listening. Uh, we would love to hear from you. So uh, please do follow Grant Tech on LinkedIn and stay up to date with everything that we're doing. Uh, subscribe to the Industry 4.0 podcast with Grant Tech wherever you get your podcasts. And you can email any questions, feedback of your thoughts on Industry 4.0 or uh, anything else that you want to talk about to info at grantech.com. And uh, join us next time on the Industry 4.0 podcast with Grant Tech.